I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and today let's talk about white dogs. Let's talk about white dogs, white dogs' coat, all the different things that can and will go wrong with your white coated dog. Um, prevention is always the you know better than the cure, easier than the cure every single time. But you know sometimes we're too late for that, right? So we're just going to talk about kind of every, we're going to touch on everything we can when it comes to keeping a white dog white, what you can do, how you should do it, how often can you do it, what works, what doesn't work, what are the pros, what are the cons of whitening, all those kinds of things. And, you know, this is going to lead into a very, very in-depth webinar that we're working on, on white dogs, white coats, all of the different things that are out there. But today, we're just going to kind of touch base so that you have a starting point if you have a white dog that maybe isn't as bright white as you'd like it to be, right? So, first of all, um, one of the things you need to realize is that there are dogs that are white, like they are genetically white, and there are dogs out there that are not. They are actually kind of biscuit colored. Um, some dogs are going to be naturally whiter than other dogs. Some dogs are genetically cream, right? So kind of knowing what shade of white you want or need to have is very, very important. The other thing that you need to know is that once your dog starts having some kind of staining, so maybe it's eye staining, maybe it's drool staining, maybe it's staining like between the toes, that kind of red staining, understand that a lot of times um, the natural body fluids of your dog, um, either naturally from the water that they drink and or from the food that they eat, once it gets on the skin can actually start a very small bacterial infection and you can make that hair that is stained as white as possible but if that bacterial infection stays there it's just going to keep restaining and sooner or later um, something has to get right so we always believe in going to the root cause as well now there's even dog foods out there that are specifically formulated for white dogs to make their hair as white as possible and to help with antioxidants and all those things that can cause some kind of staining um, there's also environmental factors right so there's environmental debris that's in the air everywhere they go also different environmental things that your dog specifically is exposed to right and one of the arguments I always get is, you know, well, my dog needs to be a dog, therefore I'm going to continue to do A, B, and C. And while I am a big proponent of our dogs need to be dogs first, like that's why we have them, you also have to realize that if you are running your dog every single day on the red sands of Prince Edward Island or on a green golf course because you live on a golf course and your dog is turning red or green, then that is something for as long as you want your dog to be white for the show ring, you're going to have to either change or give up on, right? Or change how you do that. They might need to wear boots. They might, you might not be able to do that for the nine months that you need your dog to be bright white. So thinking of all of these outside influences as well is very, very important. Then let's get down to whitening our dogs, right? Like, so there are different ways that we make our dogs look white. One of the ways is by using a blooming shampoo. Blooming shampoos are wildly popular. There's a million of them out there. And, you know, when I started, there wasn't really blooming shampoos. We actually used actual laundry blueing in our dogs. And, you know, blueing dogs aren't making our dogs white. You know what I mean? Like they're actually making our dogs blue. And that blue is covering up the yellow on the other end of, end of this, the spectrum and our eyes see that as white. But make no mistake, they are not actually making our dogs white. They are making our yellow dogs blue. And that's what we're seeing. So one of the problems is, is that if your dog's hair is very coarse, very coarse, very damaged, which a lot of times if your dog's coat should be white and is not, it's because it's damaged. Maybe it's the bacterial infection that's damaging the coat. Maybe it's something else, but it is the damage that is making your dog's coat not look white. And if you keep using bluing shampoo over and over again, eventually our dogs are going to look blue or gray or some other color that also is not white. 
Then there are enzymic cleaners, right? So these are cleaners that enzymically clean the coat. Um, most of them work with hot water. So in order for them to work, you need to mix that shampoo with as hot a water as you and your dog can stand. So make sure that your hand can go in it because if your hand can't, do not put it on your dog. But how do enzymic cleaners work? Well, they, they work by actually eating that color. The enzyme eats the staining. It's also eating kind of the outer layer of your dog's coat, which is why over time they also show discoloration. Typically that discoloration looks a little bit green because you are seeing the actual inner cortex of the dog's coat because the enzymes are eating away not only the stain but the coat. Then there is bleaching. So there's different kinds of bleaching, uh, there's different strengths of bleach, and the bleaching is removing the pigment of the coat. So a lot of times, again, when we're removing that pigment, that colored pigment to bleach out the stain and make it white, we are again left behind um, with just the actual color of the hair, which is sometimes a little bit more yellow than you think. So putting in a white toner is also very, very important to kind of, kind of counteract what you did with the bleach. Now, on top of all of those things that we've done, there's also cover-up, right? So there's chalking our dogs, there's using different kinds of makeup, whether it's a cream makeup, maybe it's a cream makeup and chalk, maybe it's chalk, maybe it's cornstarch, maybe it's some kind of whitening powder. But make no mistake that there are many different ways to cover up the white. And there's lots of things to take into consideration when you're doing this, right? Um, are, in my opinion, you should be, if it's staining that is coming from the dog's body, so tear staining, drool staining, or staining from between the toes, or urine staining, you should be working at this both internally and externally at the same time, because otherwise you're just fixing the external problem, you're just going to keep restaining it all the time. As with most things, as soon as you start getting the staining out of the coat, you've left that coat more porous and more susceptible to further staining. Staining. So you've made that coat whiter, you've also made it weaker. Therefore, it's going to restain from that internal source even quicker the next time, right? Uh, for dogs that do have urine staining, I do like to use apple cider vinegar in their drinking water to kind of counteract what the urine is doing. It often makes the urine not as bright yellow and therefore they don't stain as quickly. Um, you know, if they have some kind of eye infection, I like to make sure that I'm cleaning up those eye or those tear ducts so I'm not getting the facial staining back quite as quickly. So whenever that internal problem that is causing external staining is, it's better to combat them both at the same time. Um, as always with any kind of staining, you must keep that hair really, really well conditioned because with a lot of these whitening procedures, you are stripping out that protective layer from the coat in order to get it white. And that is really, really easy to cause that hair to be more staining. As a rule of thumb, the softer the coat, the more you can bleach it, but the harsher, more porous it is, the more likely it is to break off when you are bleaching it or using some kind of treatment. So as you can see, this is a very, very complicated issue that has many different ways of attacking it, right? You can attack the staining purely internally and just wait for the hair to grow out and be as white as, as it is going to be. You can attack it only externally, right? So you are nearly just covering it up with white chalk or white makeup. Um, that is only going to work so far and sometimes the makeup's going to wear off or um, you know be rubbed off by the judge or something like that. That's something to be aware of. Um, you can just bleach it until the hair no longer accepts the bleach or until you've damaged the hair beyond where you can bleach it again. So my favorite way is to attack kind of everything at once, internally and externally at the same time. And while I'm waiting for that clean hair to grow back in, that pristine white hair to grow in, I might use some kind of cover up in the meantime. So I hope you can see that this is a really, really complicated issue that we are going to break into many steps for you in our webinar on white dogs, how to keep that white hair white, both internally and externally. So I hope you join us for that and I hope today's tutorial helped. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought, and as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. 
You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content, and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. That way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.